So the modulus. And um, when we talk about modulus, we're talking about these straight line brackets. So you always hear something about modulus always positive. But if you think of where you've seen these straight line brackets be before, they're in the distance formula. If remember we see a line segment or the distance of it. We, we would never say the distance of a line segment was minus five, for instance. We'd always say it's five. We didn't care which orientation it had. We always gave a positive answer. And it's the same for this. So we're always going to get um, modulus brackets equal to something positive, right? And in fact, I just drew quickly what the graph would look like. So if you've got this far in the course, you've maybe done a bit of graphing at this stage. Well, the graph of a modular equation looks like this, and it has this kind of sharp bend in it, right? Um, so this sharp bend is something that is the definitive look of a modulus graph. So a modulus graph all this, it will never dip into negative space down here into, the, into these third and fourth quadrants here, because we cannot get a negative value out for this stuff. Now, I'll just talk a bit about it very quickly, right? So, if I told you the modulus of uh, 4, what is the modulus of 4? And that's just 4, because we have to make sure we get a positive answer out. But similarly, the modulus of minus 4 is also equal to 4, okay? So, think about this for two seconds, and it seems very simple at the minute. Like, we'll always get a positive answer, but if I told you the modulus of x was equal to 4. So people may, be, may get narrow-minded here and say, well, x has to be positive in here. It doesn't actually. Inside the modular brackets, we can have negative stuff. It just ends up being positive when we, take, when we actually operate on it. So for us, if the modulus of some x is 4, there's actually two answers for in here. That x could be 4, because as we saw, the modulus of 4 is 4. But that x could also be a minus 4 because the modulus of minus 4 is 4. So this is where the equations can actually get kind of tricky, but they are very simple. There is an option here to actually square both sides. So you, you may have been taught in school, or your course so far, maybe if you get this equation here, the modulus of x is equal to 5. Maybe you should, you've been told, well, square both sides here. Square this, treat these as regular brackets and square them. Why do we do that? Because when we square them, we always deal with the, with the positive value. So we can kind of drop this stuff here. So you will see in some textbooks, let's square both sides. I'm not a big fan of this method, but um, there's sometimes when it's kind of the, it's, it's not the only way, but the most obvious way to do it is to square on both sides. But I'll show you how that works, square on both sides. So if I square both sides, I'll get x squared in here and I'll get 25 here. And then I have to go ahead and solve for x. So yeah, x now is equal to the square root of 25. And the square root of 25 is plus or minus 5, which is, I suppose, we're back to the same thing. You know from this method I started off with here that x could be 5 or minus 5 in here. So maybe if we bring this on a, a little bit more, and let's just say I picked a random question here, and I said um, the modulus of x minus 2 is equal to 4. So, here's where we can start thinking here now, right? And we might come back to the graph in a few minutes, but let's look at this stuff here. The modulus of x minus 2 is equal to 4. What can this be? Straight away, you're drawn to thinking x must be 6, because 6 minus 2 is 4. That's okay. But think about inside in these brackets. What can these be in order to bet the modulus of them is 4? Remember, they could be positive 4, but this stuff could also add up to minus 4 and that would also give an answer of 4 because the modulus of minus 4 is 4. So what do I mean by that? Well the obvious answer is correct just in case you did go to that straight away just know that that x could be 6 here because if we put 6 in for x we get 6 minus 2 that's the modulus of 4 which is equal to 4 which we know up here but also if this what would make this stuff add up to minus 4? Let's think if x was minus 2 we would have minus 2 minus 2, which is minus 4, which also gives us 4, because the modulus of minus 4 is 4. So the two answers now, I kind of did these um, in my head, and you would never be expected to do that, but certainly you can get to that level. If we put 6 in here, we get the modulus of 6 minus 2, which is the modulus of 4, and that's equal to 4, we know. Great. We also, if I made x minus 2, I get the modulus of minus 2, minus 2. That's equal to the modulus of minus 4. Yep, which also happens to be 4, as we discovered earlier. So what about your square method your teacher may have told you so far? And that's okay also. If we actually look at this, and we square both sides, 
um, I'm kind of going to squeeze it in over here. Let's square x minus 2. And let's square the right hand side. So x minus 2 to be squared, what's that going to be? And then we can get x. And then we can sort these by brackets. You can still see it here. We can go x and we can go minus 6 and x plus 2, which it gives us two solutions of x equals 2. 6 or x equals 2 minus 2. So we end up back at the same solutions that we kind of did in our head a little bit earlier, a bit quicker. So hopefully you can see that's a way that we can just kind of guess our answers by saying, well, if the modulus of x is equal to 4, that stuff can be positive 4 or can be negative 4. So when we use the modulus brackets, we get out to be a positive 4. But also we get this squaring method here. So for instance, like for this stuff here, we could have we, we know here this can be 5 or minus 5. But if we square, we go through all this process here. But why did your teacher maybe show you the squaring process? Because it might sometimes get a bit trickier and you can't always see that. So let's look here. x minus 2 is equal to 4. It turns out that we know this stuff could be plus 4. Now how would we make that stuff in there plus 4? Well, if x was 6, it would be 6 minus 2, which would be the modulus of 4, which is okay. But if this stuff was minus 4 inside the brackets... Well, if we made x minus 2, that would be minus 2, minus 2, minus 4. So yeah, we figure out that x equal to 6 or x equal to minus 2, it also works. But it turns out then if we go through the squaring method here, we can square out both sides here. We can start out like a quadratic equation. We can factorize it and we get our two answers also the same here. So yeah, it seems like a little long-winded, but there are some times where it makes sense to do that. But we'll do some more examples as we go on and you may see where this way is maybe a little bit easier to do, even though it seems longer.